everyone and from today onward we are going to discuss in next few lectures about uh, uh, different uh, image enhancement techniques. Uh, so, we will start with some basic techniques, but uh, uh, before that uh, I would like to uh, discuss about uh, different formats uh, which are used uh, with the raw data when they are supplied uh, to us. Earlier uh, as you know that uh, when we did not have the optical media or through net then we used to get uh, the data in magnetic tapes and uh, if it is multi spectral data and uh, then there were some well known formats are there and still uh, you may find some data sets which may be having one of those formats. So, very briefly we are going to discuss about those formats first and then uh, uh, later on uh, we will see uh, the basic things about uh, uh, image enhancement. Uh, as you can see here a multi spectral image is, is shown just a schematic or a sample and uh, if I want to retrieve a single pixel value and uh, then as it is marked here in this one is the corner one in the band 2 that is uh, pixel value 1.105 and if uh, the data is written in uh, of multi spectral data is written in sequential form then the retrieval used to be a long process. So, in many literature and books still you would find uh, details about these formats. Nowadays, uh, after having everything uh, on a digital platform instead of or optical platform or on pen drive or through net, uh, most of the data sets which we are getting are now in band sequential format or individual bands are there and the file formats are generally TIFF files, GeoTIFF files. Uh, when I say TIFF file that is means tagged information file format and uh, that is a uh, information about the file that is about the met metadata is also uh, attached with the file. So, that kind of format is ca called TIFF format and uh, a better format which also ca carries a geographic coordinate that is called GeoTIFF. So, most of the data like for example, if you download uh, data of uh, Landsat, uh, even past data or current data, uh, you may get the data very easily in GeoTIFF format and uh, once if you get the GeoTIFF format it becomes very easy because the georeferencing is not required and immediately it can be displayed on the screen and then enhancement and other processing can start. So, uh, we go for this uh, image file format uh, as for the sequential data as you can see that uh, the example shown here the uh, four band scenario is shown here and uh, they are in all sequence. So, first uh, all the information about all lines of band 1 are at the top uh, like here and then uh, all uh, lines of band 2 are in the second in the green color then blue color and then you may have several bands. So, this is n band and in between in between you are having some other bands. So, band sequential this is called band sequential format image uh, one at a time this is most common format nowadays. In other words the data of all pixels for band 1 are stored first and then for band 2 next and so on so forth till you reach the end of the bands. And uh, uh, like uh, also you can have a different kind of format which is called band interleaved by line or bill format in which uh, as name implied that band interleaved by line. So, what will happen that the first line that is the row 1 or band 1 will come first in the sequence then uh, uh, first line of band 2 is here then first line of band 3 is here and likewise you will get the uh, data in the band interleaved. So, band interleaved by line format bill format data it stores the data pixel information band by band for each line and for row of the image. This is a um, very common uh, also in some cases because when a multi spectral data is being acquired by the satellite sensors line by line is scanned. So, it is very natural or befitting for 
that kind of format because the nature uh, when the data is being acquired it is also acquired uh, all like a first line of all band second line then second line of all band so the data itself is coming in almost in the same format as the bill so therefore uh, people also store for in this format uh, the data and uh, if it is a three band scenario like here in the left side image then as i have already mentioned that all three bands of the data are written in the row 1 then all three bands of the data are written in row 2 and why uh, for next line for next line and likewise there is another uh, uh, possibility which is most uncommon format but still for certain applications uh, it is there because uh, uh, there are certain applications which you where you need uh, uh, all one single pixel of all the bands at one time and uh, therefore another format which is called bip format band interleaved instead of line when interleaved by pixels and the data is similar uh, uh, except as i have mentioned uh, that instead of line by line now you are having pixel so the like here example that row 1 band 1 first pixel is coming then row 1 band 2 first pixel is coming row 1 band 3 first pixel is coming and likewise uh, you uh, go till the end of the image so if if uh, the data is stored like this then access uh, also becomes faster if i want to access a small portion of an large image and uh, that uh, Im uh, image is stored in bip format then access of that small portion would become very fast but if it is in the band sequence format or bil format then it might take lot of time so because of efficiency retrieval efficiency purposes different formats where all these three formats bsq bil and bp where bip were designed uh, he, here also uh, as also um, let me make you clear this was very common when we had the data storage in in you know, on tapes not on random access devices after having these optical devices or other uh, ways of storing the information then these constraints about uh, these formats have gone but still if somebody is working on uh, old archives which many times in especially studies related with climate change or some change detection study and the original data might be still in tapes or in these formats and therefore knowledge about these formats and in case of image processing digital image processing is very much required so that is why i discuss first this part now once the image has been acquired then this uh, image processing basically takes place and then uh, later on this pattern recognition or image classification will also be there and then accuracy assessment is also attempted uh, of image classification because how good the classification has been performed that too can be assessed uh, through this step so first uh, as you know that uh, this uh, few slides uh, which i am going to show a repeat of earlier lectures but here it, they are relevant uh, the purpose because image acquisition so image from satellites remote sensing uh, satellites are acqui acquired through these satellite earth station this is the external antenna of our nova avhr earth station this is the internal setup a receiver is there and it's a pc based automatic system since we have in previous lectures we have discussed in detail about the functioning of this earth station so i am not going to uh, say much about this and uh, uh, because of uh, relatively coarser spatial resolution and uh, you know, just in one go it can cover a wide swath and this is what you are seeing the entire himalaya in just one image this is not the mosaic of multiple images this is just one single image acquired by the our earth station on this date and time so of course it depends on the resolution but once the image has been acquired of course this is processed image this is not the raw image so uh, the processing what this is what we are going to discuss so image processing that includes the enhancing the image or image quality so that the interpretability improves also extracting information feature extractions or object identification that will come under the classification of 
from an image, from a satellite image or remote sensing image. So these image processing includes this. The, this these are of course because we are handling uh, digital images. So of course the, there are involvements of computers. So therefore computerized routines for information extraction and especially about the classification, pattern recognition, object detections, maybe uh, semi-automatic or automatic manner from satellite, uh, satellite images and uh, to categorize the information about specific features. So that is also performed. So the first part is to improve the quality of an image. Before that, we also require to remove certain errors which, are, which might be present in our satellite images. For example, radiometric corrections might be required, atmospheric corrections might be required or some systematic errors which might be there, there in the satellite images. Some of them we have already discussed, some we might be, uh, we will be discussing in our future uh, discussions. So those are also removed. So there are various steps and uh, one, it is not necessary that all steps have to be followed in a sequence. It depends on the input quality of image. So, um, as you know that uh, image quality and statistical evaluation, that's the first step uh, which has to be done, especially the part statistical evaluation. Uh, usually it is done uh, uh, by looking the histogram of a particular image of or individual bands if multispectral images are being used and also simple statistics, what is the mean, what is the standard deviation and so on. So once uh, I am having that information, then I can decide that which uh, image processing or image enhancement technique I need to per perform to improve the quality of my image. So image quality matters for the enhancement. There might be requirement of radiometric correction. So that will be done any, um, uh, uh, generally it is done by the uh, suppliers themselves or the agencies like in India, we are having NRSA, NDC or maybe NASA or uh, these uh, web servers are also uh, whenever they put, they are putting the data because in order to remove uh, radiometric errors from the remote sensing images, lot of other informations, uh, information is required and that information might not be available to end users, generally it is available with the agencies or operators of uh, those satellites or owners of those satellites. So therefore, at our end, we might not be doing radiometric corrections, but uh, we, we need to know whether radiometric corrections have been performed on those images or not before we start uh, using for our applications. Geometric corrections, of course, uh, uh, as uh, a few minutes back I mentioned that if you are downloading a GeoTIFF image that automatically means it is geometrically corrected. But if you are downloading a simple TIFF image that may not be having geographic coordinates, generally it will not have and therefore geometric corrections or georeferencing will be required and that can be done using uh, very uh, these standard uh, either digital image processing softwares or even GIS softwares like ArcGIS or uh, many other uh, GIS softwares. Most of these softwares now supports the geometric corrections as well. Image enhancement and sar sharpening, these are uh, through the special filtering techniques, image enhancement, different image enhancement techniques are there. Some are uh, linear, some are non-linear, from simple to complicated one. It depends again, uh, you know, what you are looking in the images and for what purpose you are going to use it. But one thing I would like to make it clear here and later on when we will be discussing the classification, at that time also I will remind this thing uh, that uh, if you are going for uh, ultimately for image classification, then be careful of choosing appropriate image enhancement technique. Because uh, if you have uh, uh, enhanced the image, uh, and then you go for uh, image classification that might give you wrong results. So it is better uh, not to uh, put a lot of enhancement before classification. It is let the uh, classified self uh, identify different objects and if it doesn't then you can come back do the some enhancement and then do again classification. So that way. Now image classification there are two broad 
types are there. One is the pixel based uh, which is very common and also object oriented based uh, classification have also been developed. They have been implemented by uh, these popular software. So, those can be also used. And uh, if you are going for classification, then of course, uh, uh, accuracy assessment, how accurately the classification has been done that you have to check either ground truth data or by using some other uh, already classified images of the same area so that you can assess the accuracy part of classification. Maybe post classification and integration of the uh, images with the GIS that is also uh, done uh, because nowadays hardly people are using satellite images in isolation and uh, they do the processing part first. Uh, or classification part in the digital image processing software or even GI softwares themselves and then along with other data sets, other themes, other layers they start using these satellite images as well. So, that is why you go for GIS platforms. Chain detection studies uh, might be there. So, you require a time series data. Again, uh, nowadays uh, this is the best time to do change detection studies. Why I said that best time to do change detection studies is because now since 1972 onward uh, for a almost entire globe you are having satellite data. Because in 1972 the first Landsat MSS data became available and since then now data is available and this is all freely available. So, if I want to now uh, you know 1972 to this about uh, about uh, 48 years or 47 years of data is now available and that can give you lot of information about the climate change or things are changing because of some natural processes or some natural disasters or man made. So, all these things now can be assessed using the long time series data or satellite data which is now has become available for all these kind of studies. Uh, further we discuss about uh, this image quality and uh, as you know that uh, many remote sensing data sets already contain high quality accurate data when you download and sometimes mosaics uh, covering a large area are also available especially about the lens of mosaic which are already processed georeferenced, they are geometrically corrected, radiometrically corrected and image quality has also improved. So, directly those images without uh, going for any kind of uh, processing can also be used for various applications. And, uh, but however, sometimes there might be some errors, noise which you can assess by once an image, uh, image is taken or downloaded from some sites, once you display first spend some time and assess the quality of image, how good it is, whether there are noises, there are stripes because due to the bad sensor or bad calibrations, all those things can be assessed. And sometimes you may get the clouds or scattering. So, your image might be looking very edgy um, and uh, that might be because of scattering effects which are taking place due to the environment or atmosphere and because between satellite and uh, surface of the earth you are having atmosphere, sometimes you are having heavy conditions and your the image quality may not be good. So, this has to be also assessed before you go for serious operations like classification and other things. There also might be random or systematic malfunctioning of remote sensing systems. In earlier times, these uh, systematic or malfunctioning or random problems bear more. But nowadays the uh, these sensors, electronics and these devices have become really robust, very rugged and uh, such errors uh, we do not see much. Except in uh, Landsat 7, uh, this uh, problem came, this uh, striping problem became so big that uh, it, become, it became very difficult to use those images. So, striping problems uh, in the older data sets uh, was very common, but not it is not nowadays it is not uh, much seen in different satellite images. Uh, if I talk about Indian remote sensing satellites, hardly this striping problem 
has ever been noticed. So we, we have been since 1988 uh, after having uh, IRS 1A, we did not have this kind of problem. The reason is because the electronics part, the sensors uh, quality has definitely improved and lot of testing is done before sensors are sent in this space. All kinds of testing is done for months or even years together and that is why uh, these uh, random or uh, systematic malfunctionings are and uh, has become now a, a rare a rare phenomena. A improper pre-processing. The pre-processing involves basically removing these errors and uh, if uh, a proper uh, care has not been taken then and if I take that image, go for image classification, I am bound to create wrong classification uh, images or maps. And therefore, it is very, very much required to uh, go through this uh, proper pre-processing steps, identify and uh, identify the details of that image which you have got. And that is the best way to do it is to also get dot .mat file, M-E-T, dot .mat file. And this is metadata file. And whenever you download any satellite images, generally these servers will also have corresponding meta file and you must this is not mythology information this is the meta metadata information metadata means information about the data itself so you have downloaded an image say image name was image 1 and dot uh, uh, geotiff or uh, tiff which is in geotiff and then you also will have a file image 1 dot met and this MET, MET will have all kinds of information related about that particular image. When image was acquired, what kind of processing had been done, what are the corner coordinates and so on and so forth. Do not avoid to uh, read all these uh, meta information. Whenever you download any satellite image because lot of free data is available nowadays, you must also along with that also download .mat file and also keep in records in your records or in your hard disk about these meta files because they are they become very important when you go for classification or any kind of reporting there you have to mention that on which date or which sensor which satellite this image was acquired what kind of processing was done by the supplier itself and what kind of processing you have done so everything should be mentioned so these these problems might be and there if care is not taken. Now inaccurate analog to digital conversion again uh, when our uh, sensors themselves we are doing all this exercise there there were some issues about uh, uh, this uh, conversion from analog to digital. But as I have mentioned now our sensors have become very robust very advanced and therefore such problems are not there. Now first step in digital image processing of satellite data is to check histogram and simple statistics. This is what I am taking one example here. That uh, when you display a histogram, ideally we expect that, they, that histogram should look like the first example in a well shaped. You know, and, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, not normally you get in a natural images, unprocessed image normally, but you expect that there should be a well saved uh, and a, or Gaussian distribution, but it is not there. You may get a image like this that uh, may be of uh, uh, this uh, might be possibly uh, there of a snow covered area or might be in a desert conditions, a histogram of that image may look like this. So if you if you see the normally distributed or Gaussianly distributed well uh, well saved uh, histogram, their mean, median, and mode all are coinciding, all are same. This is ideal condition, which is not which is rare in any of images which you download or get raw images. I am talking. This is this is possible scenario as I have said the areas which are having high albedo, high reflectance, uh, maybe in a a snow covered area may be in desert conditions. You may get uh, this uh, bimodal or multimodal distribution in this example bimodal. 
and uh, therefore mean and median are here and uh, two lobes are there the entire data is distributed in two this scenario might be in a, a, in an area where you are having two distinct uh, uh, maybe rocks two distinct uh, forest or uh, vegetation or agricultural land or maybe at coastal regions also where uh, half of the image is having land part half of the image is having the sea part so uh, this kind of distribution might be there also you may have uh, just opposite to the this uh, top right you may have a skewed image a skewed uh, histogram which is in the beginning of the image uh, you are having maximum frequency in the lower among lower pixel values as is shown here so mode is here then median and then mean here is mean is coming first then median and then mode it if it is uniformly distributed again this is a very rare uh, thing except in uh, you know is in stand still or very calm ocean conditions or in a very desert conditions where you don't have any features at all almost featureless desert then you may get a, a histogram or pixel distribution something like this the completely flat part so this uh, this is very much because once you have uh, seen the histogram analyzed the histogram now you know what a, what what kind of processing would be required for my image so that that tells the future steps for image processing now here the mean which i mean uh, the I mention here the mean is the arithmetic average and is defined as the sum of all brightness values that is pixel values observations divided by the number of observations so here this is what the mean is derived from a satellite image median is the value midway as you can always see here median 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 and median here is the value midway in the frequency distribution because on the y axis you are having frequency on the x axis you are having the pixel values so one ha one half of the area below the distribution curve is to the right of the median and the other half on the left side of the median and mode is the value that occurs most frequently in a distribution and usually the highest point on the curve so as you are seeing in most of these examples that is the highest point in here so uh, these things uh, though these are uh, simple things you might have gone in a simple statistics but it, it is necessary to relate and remind about these uh, statistical parameters which will allow us to understand what kind of processing is further required to improve the image quality for better interpretability so uh, in image processing and uh, now we go for geometric uh, correction very briefly and uh, which will be discussed not already discussed uh, sorry for this wrong typing here and uh, this will be discussed as a separate topic in georeferencing then radiometric correction uh, whether they have been already done generally it is done by the agencies atmospheric corrections are not done by agencies if it is very much required we must do it but it's a complicated task so one has to be prepared with lot of input data if you are going to attempt atmospheric correction we will have a separate treatment for atmospheric correction in later discussions and also it is uh, uh, basically main purpose is uh, to improve the quality of image so better interpretations can be performed that's the purpose of image enhancement and uh, as uh, uh, like in india Uh, you can order images asking that please perform these corrections before you supply of course there will be some extra charges suppose you go and say that i want geometrically radiometrically and atmospherically corrected image for a certain area then agency will do it they are having their standard uh, you know procedures techniques by which they will do it and supply it but it will be a costly affair rectification again rectification uh, is also sometimes for geometric correction rectification term is also used but basically rectification means removing the distortions which might have been uh, introduced by 
द प्लेटफॉर्म और माइट बी द सेंसर अर्थ कर्वेचर और एटमोसफियर सो दीज रेक्टिफिकेशंस आर रिक्वायर्ड नाउ सो वी विल गो वन बाय वन ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ करेक्शंस विच आर रिक्वायर्ड सो फर्स्ट इज द रेडियोमेट्रिक करेक्शंस रेडियोमेट्रिक करेक्शन इज ए प्री प्रोसेसिंग स्टेप मैथड टू रिकन्स्ट्रक्ट फिजिकल फिजिकली कैलिब्रेटेड वैल्यूज by correcting the spectral errors and distribution caused by the sensor these stripping will occur only when your ccds in a sensor are not perfectly calibrated and therefore they will produce a de stripping phenomena as you can see here so uh, or we say noise removal also one can call it but noise when you say it is a random kind of thing de stripping is a systematic error due to the poorly calibrated sensor sometimes on the ground everything was done perfectly all right during launch or after certain years of operations the sensors may go bad so you may have or they some may under, start underperforming and therefore you may have this stripping effect too but if it is not too much like in this example then using the surrounding pixel values adjacent pixel values these and uh, these stripping effect or stripping effect can be removed and these then you will get an image which doesn't have now these stripping effect as on seen on the right side of this image so this is a typical uh, errors and it is possible to some extent to remove by using the surrounding values and taking their average and giving to those uh, pixels which are under these under performance of individual uh, sensors and these drop lines are normally corrected as i have just mentioned replacing line with the pixel value in the line above or below or with the average of so it depends on for what purposes you are going to use images and uh, uh, but it is possible to do now the noise part noise generally is speckle and uh, these speckles as on shown on the left images can also be removed again employing almost the same method as for the drop lines that means now looking the surrounding values and taking their average and giving to the uh, that pixel which has got uh, this uh, black dot or black or dark uh, performance or low performance by the sensor so by doing that exercise uh, one can achieve this one systematic errors are easier to remove non systematic errors like noise is not that easy and still that the output may carry unless you go for large area search and radius and that may reduce the quality of image that will uh, that may uh, reduce the sharpness in image that will uh, make the image more smooth and but uh, may not be uh, very good for certain applications otherwise generally if there is no choice i have to use that particular image because that belong to a particular date and i need it then that's the way to remove that noise generally noise uh, stripping effects can be seen but noise generally is not common in normal remote sensing images except in the microwave or radar images noise is a very common phenomena now atmospheric corrections atmospheric correction is the basically uh, because it happens uh, when uh, this uh, uh, it has uh, the reflection or emittance has to travel through atmosphere to the sensor so solar radiation basically if i am talking about daytime images generally which we use then solar radiation is largely unaffected as it travels through the vacuum of space but uh, in natural conditions we don't have the vacuum so it has to pass through uh, the atmosphere so when it interacts with the atmosphere earth as atmosphere is selectively scattered and absorbed depending on the size of particles or gases which are present in the atmosphere and this is a very dynamic these are particles and gases are not permanently located in certain heights or depths of in a space so this is a very dynamic system and uh, it depends on image to image basically or day to day conditions of atmospheric conditions so these some of these two forms 
of energy loss which is one is scattering another one is absorption is called atmospheric attenuation and this attenuation can reduce the quality of an image if you if you compare the images of earth with the images of mars mars taken by the various satellites even our mangalyaan images of mars are uh, very clean very clear the reason is because mars is uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have much atmosphere at all it's a very thin atmosphere it is having and therefore it is perfect for remote sensing because in between there is no atmosphere you will not have atmospheric corrections and images of uh, you get images of very high quality even the sensor may not be as good as for earth we are using but because of the presence of earth because of its scattering and absorption effects by the various gases various particles which are present uh, deteriorates uh, our image quality due to atmospheric attenuation and uh, our aim in atmospheric correction is generally to remove that uh, or minimize may not be uh, removal is may not be possible all the time this is too difficult also because uh, we need to have lot of input data and for that particular moment of time when image was taken so someone has to collect the data now uh, all these models which are used for atmospheric corrections or techniques which are used requires those kind of inputs so uh, completely removing atmospheric effects from satellite images of earth is not really possible but nonetheless uh, we try for uh, that thing and uh, so that uh, this uh, uh, the atmospheric correction is in turn the digital brightness values recorded by remote sensing system into a scaled surface reflection values because of this one so these are not basically true brightness value but they are distorted due to the presence of atmosphere and these values can then be compared or used in conjunction with scaled surface reflectance values obtained anywhere else on the planet so if if a, if a one would uh, like to do it a uh, comp- uh, almost uh, uh, you know 100% or near 100% removal of this thing then you required standard values which have been collected without uh, without having atmospheric distortions and if you compare with these values if you use those st- scaled surface reflectance values then it becomes easier to remove atmospheric uh, distortions from the satellite images as shown here that is scattering absorption reflection and uh, refraction all these things are happening and this and uh, this all is happening between 100 km from earth up to the top layer of atmosphere sensor is much above 850 km but in between the the energy uh, the has to pass reflection or emittance energy has to pass through this atmosphere and all kinds of and these phenomena attenuations scattering absorption refraction reflection will occur so there are uh, therefore it is little complicated to isolate and uh, different uh, these contributions uh, of these attenuation uh, parameters uh, from to in order to remove atmospheric distortions so these are there are those several ways of atmospherically corrected remote sensing data and some are relatively straight forward we also call brute force kind of thing in a very simple way you can just remove assuming that thing should have been like that only that we will also discuss the straight forward way being founded on the physical principles and requiring a significant amount of information to function properly if you want to go for more sophisticated now here i am giving one example on left side you are having an image which is not which is suffering from atmospheric distortions and as you can see that uh, because of a uh, uh, presence of different particles and gases uh, within the atmosphere uh, you are seeing that this middle part is relatively bright and then uh, you know top part or bottom part is little darker but when this uh, correction was performed then the middle part is no more that much bright or these top part and bottom part 
are now uh, not much uh, uh, different than the central part. So, in uh, because these might be having uh, some in the left image, they might be suffering from uh, distortions, atmospheric. So, if uh, like uh, substantial H, H is nothing but the scattering happening within the atmosphere and uh, that, uh, that can be also be corrected to some extent. And uh, after this image correction, uh, this, uh, uh, there are different models and uh, each software company or organizations, they are having their own models depending on basically the requirement of atmospheric correction completely depends on for what you are going to use satellite images. If you go for very quantitative analysis of remote sensing data, satellite images, then atmospheric correction is must. But if you are going for qualitative applications, qualitative assessment of satellite images, then probably the, you know, the straightforward methods of atmospheric correction and uh, that is sort of linear enhancement, through linear enhancement one can achieve that we will be also discussing later. So, image enhancement as also discussed earlier is a improves the interpretability of images, uses of images by increasing apparent contrast among various features. So, different features present objects present on an image can be distinguished, can be discriminated, discerns very easily. So, one technique is called contrast stretching or contrast manipulation, very simple technique. There are special feature manipulation techniques which are like spatial filtering, edge enhancement that is also part of uh, spatial filtering or maybe smoothening the image or instead of a uh, spatial domain, one can transform the image in the Fourier domain or frequency domain and then can do the corrections and uh, or uh, you know filtering and then again uh, transfer back backward transformation from frequency domain to spatial domain by and going through this Fourier analysis. So, that is also done. Now, multi image manipulation and uh, these two uh, can be done on single image or multi spectral image, but these uh, they, uh, these multi image manipulations are done on multiple when you are generally we are handling multi spectral data. So, we can also perform band ratioing sometimes it can give better, very good results because now two bands informations are involved here. Sometimes you can use principal components if you are having too many images and uh, you want to you want to uh, you know collect uh, grab the maximum variance present in different images then the principal component can be one of the techniques which we will be discussing uh, is very good uh, to get a better color composite. Maybe there are there are few vegetation indices are also there, so that can be also used. These are these will be performed on multi image uh, when you are having multi spectral images. Now one example is here, which we see the uh, on the left side on the bottom you are seeing the original image, and on the right side which is contrast stretch image, is now as you can see looks much better as compared to the left image because left image is a, a, a has not been a, you know contrast stretch or a brightness or contrast has not been improved on it. If you see the original histogram as I mentioned also whenever you use a raw image first see the histogram simple statistics and then move for choose the appropriate image announcement technique. So, if you see the histogram uh, what we see that uh, the distribution is between uh, 84 to 153 instead between 0 to 255. Ideally, what we expect a well shaped distribution, a Gaussian distribution, all values are varying between this full dynamic range between 0 to 255. But in this particular example, the values are varying between 84 to 153, and this is a bimodal distribution as well. And as you can see that there are certain areas which are having uh, maybe the water bodies, maybe the shadow areas which are having uh, low pixel values are appearing as dark as compared to other areas which are appearing bright and they are this is the second uh, peak in histogram is representing the brighter areas. So, what 
what uh, the quickest way of removing uh, uh, atmospheric distortions there might be haze and other effects might be there in the left image. So, if the quickest or you know straightforward way of removing that thing to do the linear contrast stretch or linear enhancement and that can be done by pulling this uh, the well the, this bottom of this uh, histogram first lob or uh, first peak that means shifting 84 value to 0 and 153 value to 255 and stretching to full extent like that and that is why it is contrast stretching and ultimately what we are improving in the image is the contrast and this is what you see on the right side image. And when you see uh, the histogram of uh, this right side image, the contrast stretch image, now you see that uh, the now it is occupying the full range, full dynamic range available, it is a 8 bit scenario though image is colored but single band example is given in the histograms and this is what you are seeing that now pixel values are varying between 0 to 255 instead 84 to 153 because this is the space or dynamic range available for us to display our images and a original image was using only between 84 to 153. Now, this contrast stretch image is using the full dynamic range between 0 to 255 and therefore, you are seeing results vary. And uh, I mentioned uh, about this uh, uh, quick way, straightforward way of removing contrast uh, atmospheric correction. There might be because of uh, some absorptions, these areas you do not have for uh, this part of histogram, you do not have pixel values because of the soft suns and there are areas which might be due to uh, uh, um, due to scattering effects and uh, you are uh, you are not getting values here and uh, due to your uh, absorptions you are not getting values in this range. So, by uh, stretching these values from 84 to 0 and 153 and remaining value accordingly then you are forcefully removing uh, here the uh, absorptions and he here you are uh, uh, removing the scattering. So, this way uh, the atmospheric attenuations can also be removed, but this is a very hard way of doing without having any input about the atmospheric conditions. Just looking the histogram and if they are not distributed in full dynamic range, we are pulling them and distributing in the full dynamic range by removing these two major effects of atmosphere that is at, uh, scattering and absorptions. So, that way it is possible. Uh, another example is here and uh, that is uh, um, um, values are distributed between 0 60 to 158 and uh, I can stretch these values and uh, they say simple linear stretch uh, like this only. So, when no, no stretch that means the same values are there in that means between 0 to uh, 60 to 158 instead of 0 to 255. Now, here the values has been stretched and they are now between 0 to 255 and once you are using a full dynamic range your contrast is definitely going to improve. And now, if uh, there is another example rather than uh, and going for a linear stretch, one can go for a non-linear stretch. And this is that example. So, this uh, stretch histogram stretch is like this. So, where uh, where you had the more frequencies, that part is stretched more. That means more distribution was created. And where you had the less frequency, less number of pixels having those pixel values, they have been stretched less. And likewise, you can also do this histogram stretch or also called histogram equalization. I will repeat this is very important where you are having more frequencies, more number of pixels are belonging to a certain range of pixels, you are distributing them more and where less number of pixels are having almost same values or the range of values, you are distributing less. So, less values less frequency values are less more frequency values are more distributed and this way it is basically equalizing the histogram 
because by redistributing these pixel values. So it is also called histogram stretch or histogram equalization which is more popular term used in digital image processing softwares or literature. Second is a nonlinear. Also this first one is also linear, nonlinear example. A spatial stretch, you choose that I am I want to stretch only the values between 0, 60 to 92 only. I don't I am I am not interested in the uh, higher frequency uh, pixel value. I am interested in the lower part of my histogram or first part of my histogram and stretch like this. That that is a special kind of uh, stretch and uh, that can also be done. It depends on my application. I might be interested in uh, water uh, pixels or uh, pixels which are representing the water body rather than land part because I am working on a lake or might be in a coastal area and so on. So selective uh, stretch can also be performed. So two basic types, linear stretch which is shown in the previous example and uh, like this one and and nonlinear stretch, two example histogramic visualization and spatial stretch are possible. Few more examples are here. Uh, input image, as you can see, left side, and in, uh, in histogram of input image, low contrast, as you can see. The distribution of uh, pixels are not occupying the full range available, that is 0 to 255. This is again 8 bit scenario. This is 8 bit scenario example is here. But in, in the lower part, when image is stretched, this distribution has taken place. And uh, now this is between 0 to 255. And you start seeing uh, contrast in the image. Very simple way of improving image quality. Either doing a simple linear stretch or contrast in stretch, contrast enhancement by histogram stretching. That means histogram uh, is, uh, histogram stretching that basically a linear in a, a histogram equalization here as you can see that now the the peaks there are many peaks earlier in the raw image a raw image histogram there were only few peaks are there so the frequency has been distributed in the full dynamic range and this that the result would be uh, much better in some cases each, can, each image enhancement technique cannot be uh, true or befitting, befitting for all the images. So one, for one uh, histogram equalization may be good for one particular image, but it is not good all the time. So this brings to end of uh, our discussion on simple uh, contrast stretching, either linear or nonlinear. By doing this thing, be immediately improved. This can be done very quickly using standard softwares or some photo editing softwares as well and by which we can improve the image quality immediately. So this brings to end of this discussion. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.